We all love the insane practical stunts, but I think we also all just like watching Tom Cruise running at full speed. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be continuing my Mission Impossible review series with the seventh film in the franchise, 2023's action thriller, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations. So be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 stars Tom Cruise, Haley Atwell, and Isai Morales, and was directed by Christopher McQuarrie. It tells the story of IMF agent Ethan Hunt as he and his team race to stop a powerful threat known as the Entity from falling into the wrong hands. Over the last 27 years, Mission Impossible has become a film staple, not just as a spy franchise, but perhaps even more so as an action franchise. People watching Brian De Palma's moody espionage thriller in 1996 probably probably wouldn't have guessed the action intensive turn the series would take, but over the last decade and a half, this franchise has fallen into a perpetual cycle of one-upping itself with each subsequent film. Fallout was an action-packed spectacle with a strong story to boot, so its follow-up was always going to be in a pretty tough spot, just like Rogue Nation was on the heels of Ghost Protocol. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is obviously a Part 1 film, something we've seen a lot of this summer. Originally billed as a two-part finale to the franchise, though the finale part has seemingly been walked back since, this is a massive movie. And I'm not just talking about the lengthy runtime. Everything here has a very large-scale feel to it. The story, the action, the threat. It might not be the best Mission Impossible movie, but it's quite possibly the biggest we've had so far. As with all the other Mission Impossible films, Dead Reckoning Part 1 sees the team facing a seemingly impossible mission. I mean, it makes sense. The IMF wouldn't be involved otherwise. But it does mean that, once again, the team's trying to stop a huge global threat. This is something we've seen before. Damaging information, viruses, nukes, several times. Our protagonistic team has also often worked outside of the purview of well, everybody. After seven films, they could be considered rogue agents more often than not, something that's humorously alluded to a few times in this film. So the fact that Dead Reckoning follows Ethan Hunt and his team as they go rogue in order to try to stop a global threat probably isn't all that surprising. It might even initially sound like a bit of a rehash of the last few films. In fact, the story may sound even more familiar when we factor in the prominent tech-based threat at the heart of the film. It's almost a bit of a throw back to tech thrillers of the 90s and 2000s, including several James Bond films. But despite all of these familiar elements, Dead Reckoning's plot remains surprisingly compelling. The AI-based story is very timely, and with the rate of advancements and prevalence of use of real-world AI, this film's plot doesn't sound like the far-fetched sci-fi it probably would have only 15 years ago. Instead, it adds to things and enhances the elements that make an espionage film exciting. The paranoia, the atmosphere of suspicion. Our central team is used to working alone at this point, but this film's plot has them doubting everything, their intel, their digital equipment, even themselves. Although this franchise is known for its entertaining and involved stories, Dead Reckoning is one of the most plot-driven films in the series in quite a while. But that doesn't mean it's lacking in character focus. As probably expected, the core IMF team is still key here. We get the main lineup we've had the last few movies, with Ethan, Luther, Benji, and Ilsa working together, and apart, to problem solve, punch, and hack their way through an assortment of obstacles. Like many Mission Impossible films before, this movie also introduces a new protagonist, Haley Atwell's Grace, who brings some new skills to the team, not to mention some disruption. Ever since Mission Impossible 3, these movies have provided us with some insight into and focus on Ethan, beyond just his role as an IMF agent. He isn't some cold, calculating spy character. He's got people he cares about that he often prioritizes and puts first. This is perceived as a weakness by many of his superiors and foes, and it's something that's certainly put him in plenty of challenging spots over the years, but it also motivates him and gives him an additional sense of purpose. 
his team really means something to him. And we see a doubling down on that concept here. Plus, some interesting new plot elements that reach into the past to look at the people and events that sent him on the path to becoming an IMF agent in the first place. Speaking of which, Isai Morales' Gabriel is our primary antagonist this time around. He's got an interesting presence and gives off an almost Bond villain vibe at times, but at least after only part one, he's not a top tier Mission Impossible villain for me. He's got personality, which is more than can be said about a few other villains in the series, but the menace of his character is more the result of outside story factors than it is from him as just a singular character. A handful of minor antagonists, and sometimes allies, fill things out, so Ethan and the team are certainly not lacking threats to face here. I gotta say, I actually liked the plot, as well as most of the characters, but this film really drops the ball with the handling of one character in particular. With a long-running franchise like this, it's easy to get attached to the regular characters. So if something big happens to one of them, a major personality change, injury or death, a betrayal or sudden unexplained absence, it can be frustrating. However, sometimes a movie can do one of those things in a way that works for the story, even if you don't like what happened to the character. Dead Reckoning was not able to do that. No spoilers, but once you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about and the specific event I'm talking about. What should have been an emotional catalyzing moment somehow feels like a hollow waste, and the focal shift that occurs in the aftermath makes it all the more diminishing. Luckily, something that's not diminished here is the action, which is unsurprisingly spectacular. This has been a franchise trend for over a decade now, and each film ratchets things up another level to introduce increasingly outrageous and jaw-dropping stunts. As an action thriller, Dead Reckoning has got some of the action components you'd expect from any film in the genre. Shootouts, fistfights, car chases. As a Mission Impossible movie, you also know there's going to be at least five scenes featuring a sprinting Tom Cruise thrown in there too. And Dead Reckoning does have all these expected components, but it adds a little something to each of them to keep things fresh and exciting. A simple shootout isn't good enough anymore. How about one on horseback in the middle of a sandstorm? A fist fight isn't all that challenging, so we better make it two on one and have it take place in a three foot wide alley. And we can't just have any old car chase. It's gotta be a 20 minute long car swapping, driver swapping, chaotically entertaining chase across the streets and stairs of Rome. We've got exciting action sequences in airports, in clubs, in trains, on trains, all memorable and very involved. Since this is Mission Impossible, we've also got the huge stunts. The motorcycle jump has been featured in all the trailers, so you'd think it'd somehow be less impactful, but it's still spectacular to watch in the context of the film. As always, the action's practical and very real, and the 61-year-old Tom Cruise is still doing his own stunts, including driving a motorcycle off a cliff. With action like that, it's easy to call Dead Reckoning an entertaining film. And it is. Between those crazy action sequences and its engaging plot, it easily captures the audience. That said, the pacing is a little uneven. During the actual action sequences, things are tensely and excitingly cut together, but it's during the between action downtime that things occasionally feel a little on the slow side. There's the expected exposition early on, which would have actually been a bit improved compared to normal if it weren't for a few laughably overdramatic line deliveries. With the runtime approaching three hours, some people may feel their attention and bladder waver a bit. It never drags, but it still could have used a little tightening up. As the name announces, this is only a part one, but it's a satisfying part one. Unlike the other part ones this summer, Dead Reckoning feels like a full story with an actual beginning, middle, and end. No cliffhanger, no abrupt ending that feels like somebody arbitrarily hit pause in the middle of a six hour movie. The overarching story remains incomplete for now, but you won't leave the theater feeling like you only watched half of a movie. It's a film that's satisfying alone, but will probably become even more satisfying with the added story context of part two next summer. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is unsurprisingly the action. I mean, was there really any question about that? As has been the case for the last few films in the franchise, the stunts and action sequences are absolutely unreal. Massive sandstorm shootouts, huge car chases, death-defying motorcycle jumps, at least a half dozen shots of Tom Cruise sprinting at full speed, including in perhaps his most appropriate location ever, 
through an airport. There are huge multi-stage action set pieces like the remarkable train sequence or the entertaining levity-injecting Rome car chase, but there are also, comparatively, smaller moments of action that are just as exciting and effective in the context of the story. As we've come to expect in this franchise, the vast majority of the stunts in this film are done practically, though there are a few moments where green screen is a bit more noticeable than usual. And as we've also come to expect with this franchise, Tom Cruise does most of his own insane stunts. The second pro is the story. Although I think fans may end up being split on the AI-focused plot, I personally thought it worked really well. It felt like a bit of a throwback to the tech thrillers of the 90s and 2000s, but updated with a modern and very timely twist. Even though the threat is a touch more sci-fi than usual, I thought it fit in well with the paranoia, suspicion, and just general distrust of everything and everybody in spy films. I did have one major issue with the story, which I'll talk about in the cons, but it was a surprisingly compelling and complete story, especially for part one of a two-parter. On the con side, my biggest issue is the story's handling of a specific character. Now, I'm gonna keep this spoiler free, so I've gotta be a little vague here, but once you see the movie, you'll know who and what I'm talking about. So I get it. Things have to happen to some of these characters. Everybody can't be completely fine and unchanged after every single movie, otherwise there'd be no tension when they're facing all these crazy dangers. But this isn't just a case of, aw oh man, a character I like had something happen to them. This is more frustrating than that, because this thing that happens could've and should've had strong reverberating effects on the story and characters, but it ends up feeling like a waste, with everything just shifting a little bit without too much difficulty and moving on. I'm hoping the implications of this moment and the handling of this character have more of an impact on part two, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 4 out of 5 pause. It's an exciting and action-packed installment that pulls in plot elements that are both a bit of a tech thriller throwback and also something surprisingly timely. It's got some uneven pacing and a few frustrating story choices, but the expectedly insane action sequences keep this a highly entertaining film. I would recommend Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 to fans of spy thrillers, especially those who like tech-based plots. This has story elements that are reminiscent of tech thrillers of the 90s and 2000s, but gives it the expected espionage twist. Existing Mission Impossible fans will appreciate the character moments and connections to the past, and even if you don't really watch the Mission Impossible movies, this has some absolutely insane action set pieces that are sure to impress just about anyone. If you liked Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, I would recommend Skyfall. This 23rd film in the James Bond franchise is another solid espionage thriller that takes some time to dive into the origins of its central protagonist, while still providing a compelling story in the present. It's also got some very well done action, including a train top fight. If you can't get enough action, you'll want to check out John Wick Chapter 4. Nobody drives a motorcycle off a cliff, but it's absolutely full of stunningly choreographed fight sequences, and also features another exciting action sequence on a famous set of stairs. And if you'd prefer to stick with the Mission Impossible franchise, you might want to watch Mission Impossible Fallout. Although it focuses on a different mission, it does feature many of the same characters, and also showcases arguably the best action of the franchise so far. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie with a plot that centers around artificial intelligence? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.